ever since the world has realized the urgent need for preserving the planet's biodiversity, serious efforts are being made not only to preserve what we still have, but also to revive the extinct species. But why is biodiversity so important? How does it matter if an animal or plant species vanishes forever? Well, biodiversity facilitates the processes that support all life on Earth. Without a wide range of animals, plants and microorganisms, it is impossible to have healthy ecosystems which provide us with the air we breathe and the food we eat. About a third of the world's total crop production depends on pollinators like birds, bees and, and other insects. Without pollinators, we would not have apples, almonds, cherries and many more foods. Invertebrates help maintain the soil for agriculture. Life from the oceans provides the main source of animal protein for a large section of the human population. Trees, bushes, wetlands and grasslands slow down the flow of rainwater which enables the soil to absorb it. This helps prevent floods. With fast and unplanned urbanization, floods have become quite common today because green cover has been destroyed over vast areas of land. We all know that trees and plants clean the air we breathe and by absorbing carbon dioxide help us in fighting our challenge of global climate change. Unfortunately, ever since the march of civilization picked up pace during the industrial revolution of the 19th century, countless species on land and sea have become extinct. Since 1900, at least 500 animal species and 571 plant species have become extinct. Among these are the Asiatic cheetah, Great Indian Bustard, Sumatran Rhinoceros, Passenger Pigeon, Golden Toad, Tasmanian Tiger, Pink-Headed Duck, Woolly Mammoth and the Himalayan Quail and many more. Among plants and trees, countless medicinal herbs and ferns have been wiped off thanks to deforestation and mining in different parts of India, especially the Himalayas. And this is continuing in the mountainous regions and other parts of the world also. There are countless more on the verge of extinction because of our insatiable hunger for mineral and forest resources. However, governments and private organizations are waking up to the looming crisis. Several attempts are being made to not only preserve the species which, are, which have survived so far, but also try and revive the extinct ones using different methods such as cloning, genetic engineering, and selective breeding. However, none of these attempts have fully succeeded in producing viable, fertile offspring that can survive in the wild. The Pyrenean ibex became extinct in 2000. In 2003, scientists developed its, its clone from a frozen tissue, but it could not survive. The clone could not survive. Australia's gastric brooding frog swallowed its eggs and gave birth through its mouth. So it was a unique species. It became extinct in the 1980s due to habitat loss, pollution and disease. In 2013, scientists tried to create its embryos but failed. The woolly mammoth was a giant hairy elephant that roamed the northern regions of Eurasia and North America during the Ice Age. It became extinct about 10,000 years ago because of climate change, hunting and habitat fragmentation. In 2015, scientists used the gene editing technique by inserting mammoth genes into elephant cells but only succeeded in creating a hybrid. The passenger pigeon was a migratory bird that once numbered in billions in North America. It became extinct in 1914 due to overhunting and deforestation. 
In 2017, all attempts to revive the species through gene editing failed. Aurox was a wild ancestor of domestic cattle that lived throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa. It became extinct in a 16 it became extinct in 1627 due to hunting and habitat loss. The revival attempts through selective breeding succeeded only partially because the hybrids were genetically different from the original. In 2013, the National Geographic Society held an event on de-extinction to popularize the idea, the idea of de-extinction. Conservationists describe de-extinction as deep ecological enrichment or restoring ecosystem functions lost through extinction. It is visualized that resurrected animals would be released into suitable habitats to increase biodiversity and revive ecosystem resilience. In other words, habitats like grasslands, forests or wetlands would be recreated for these animals which would greatly improve carbon absorption and reverse the damage done to our environment. How will this de-extension come about? Now that's a priceless question. So far, all attempts to resurrect the extinct species have failed. But the scientist community has not given up. They are working on new bioengineering techniques to manipulate genetic material in an organism. This traditional technique coupled with the latest gene editing technology has ignited hope and excitement among conservationists. In other words, genetic engineering is being looked upon as the best bet for resurrecting the extinct species. This involves cloning, gene editing with the help of synthetic genomics and backbreeding. These approaches are explained here. The technique of cloning has produced genetically identical species. On July 5, 1996, a lamb named Dolly was born from a female sheep. The first mammal cloned from adult animal cells. The scientists generated a nuclear gene sequence identical to the donor of the non-productive cell. However, cloning is effective only if intact living cells are available. It has not yet proved useful in the cases of long extinct species. Gene editing manipulates a living organism's genetic material by deleting, replacing or inserting a DNA sequence. This technique helps in changing physical traits like eye color and vulnerability to infections and disease. Synthetic genomics is similar to genome editing. Synthesized DNA pieces can be novel genes or genes found in other organisms, which could help improve a species' survival chance or even develop a new species altogether. However, it is not confirmed whether this technology can resurrect, can resurrect an extinct species in its original form. Back breeding or selective breeding can increase the presence of specific traits within a population. Back breeding has limitations as a de extinction approach. This method works well when the extinct species are closely related to a still living species. There is no guarantee that the selected characteristics will occur since the current environment is likely far different from when the extinct species walked the earth. De-extinction efforts are facing several challenges and controversies, including ecological and ethical. On the ethical front, it is being argued that such technologies, especially backbreeding, have the potential to change the course of natural history. Many species had become extinct because these were deprived of their habitats. Reintroducing the resurrected species into the wild may have unforeseen consequences. Many point out that de-extinction does not have positive ecological value in principle or otherwise. Perhaps it would be more rewarding to preserve what we 
are left with rather than resurrect what is lost. We also need to revisit the postulation that de-extinction is not a morally permissible activity. Thank you for being with me. I shall come back with another video very soon.